Welcome to Air Gun Action. In this week's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at this brilliant bull pup. It's the BRK Brocock Ghost. But before that, we're joining Rich Saunders for a day and night hunting session in which he manages to make a mixed bag of rabbit, squirrel and rats. Now I'm out after grey squirrels once again today. Uh, I think most people appreciate the damage that they can cause to trees by stripping bark. You know, they can kill the limbs on trees, even kill entire trees. But to be perfectly honest, the woods here are left to grow wild, so that isn't too much of a problem. The bigger issue is that squirrels are also ruthless predators of songbird eggs and chicks. And we have a number of protected woodland species nesting here. We have field fares, bramblings, firecrests, uh, and Neil, the, the cameraman, has said he's even seen a bearded tit this morning. Anyway, I've been on a bit of a campaign for the last few weeks, what with spring just around the corner when the birds will start to be nesting, to try and reduce the squirrel numbers to give the birds every possible chance. Um, I have been walking around the woods for the last couple of hours. To be honest, I haven't seen much. It's been a little bit foggy. Um, which I think has put the squirrels down a little bit. The fog is now starting to lift though, so I'm going to move across to the woods on the other side and try out a feeder that I've been running for the last few months to see if I can have some better luck there. Now, before we start, the rifle I'm using is uh, a Rexamex Pretensis. Uh, in, in actual fact, Matt had one of these on the show uh, a few episodes back. Um, sub 12 foot pounds, uh, 2 2 calibre. Now I've had it on the range and it's putting out a very consistent 11.5 foot pounds and uh, it's really accurate as well. Side lever, magazine fed as well, so it gives me a really good opportunity to take follow up shots if I need to. And um, I put a silencer on myself, it doesn't come with a silencer, but I put one on there because I think you need one in a, in a hunting uh, situation. On top, I've got a, uh, a Hick, uh, Hick Micro Alpex A50T day-night scope. It's a digital scope. Um, I really love this scope. I've been using it an awful lot at night when it's really, really good for, for rat and rabbit shooting. But you know, it's just as good in the day. And it also allows me to, uh, to take some recordings of shots, hopefully through the camera, to give you an idea of that daytime quality. And that is held on with a set of sports match scope mounts as ever. Well, that's more like it. That one was uh, as clean as a whistle. It was sat on top of the of the feeder, then dropped down into the tray, and he was dead before he hit the ground.
Well, I hope I managed to record all of that. Um, initially, a squirrel went up onto the feeder. Then he seemed to see the, the other dead ones on the floor. That made him nervous. He went up and down the tree a couple of times. Then a second squirrel appeared, went straight up to the feeder. I thought I was going to get a shot at him, but then he cleared off sharpish. Uh, but all that did was make the first one go back up to the feeder because I think he was frightened he was going to miss out on a meal. Um, and I hit him nice and uh, nice and clean. I thought he was going to stay on top of the feeder, but he managed to kick himself off at the last second. Well, I think I'm going to call that a day there. I've shot, what, I don't know, five or six squirrels, which is a really good start. There's plenty more in here, though, so I will come back again before too long. Um, I'm going to go and pick up all of those and take them to my local bird of prey centre. Um, but I have just had a phone call from another one of my permission owners. It's a chicken farm. You've probably seen me shooting there before. And the farmer said that he's got a real problem with rats at the moment. So I'm going to pack up my gear, go and have a cup of tea, then head up to the chicken farm this evening and see if I can get a few more rats. So I'll see you up there. So the farmer has pulled back one of the sheds or two of the sheds, the chicken sheds, back into the field so that all the muck can be scraped up and the sheds can be cleaned. And what that means is all the rats have been displaced and there's hundreds around here. I've seen loads through the thermal and um, yeah, there's plenty through the thermal. Now what I'm going to do is rather than staying in one place, I'm going to stay mobile, move around, spot the rats with the thermal and hopefully snipe a few off in each spot before moving on to a fresh spot. Well, that was a hectic 15 or 20 minutes or so. I got a few there. I managed to hit the wire on one of them, but um, he wasn't scared. He just stayed where he was, gave me a chance to recycle the side lever and get him with a follow-up shot.
Well, I'm back round the back of one of the sheds and there's plenty of rats here, just shot a few more. Um, I had to give one a follow-up shot, which is really good, you know, with a PCP rifle, magazine-fed rifle, you can get off those follow-up shots really, really quickly, which is what I had to do there. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move back round to the yard. There's quite a few pallets and things in the yard there, and I'm sure there'll be some rats hiding around in there as well. Well, there's plenty more rats underneath the shed again here. A shot load more, including a 3-4. Um, the farmer's just mentioned to me that he's seen some rabbits around the backfield here where there's some polytunnels. So I think I'll have a wander up there and see if I can't get one for the pot. The farm was right. I walked down two or three polytunnels here and managed to spot a rabbit through the thermal. And fortunately, he was sat with his back to me, so I was able to get into position. And because of the, the rows of plants in here, it's very easy to tell how far the distance is. And that one was pretty much bang on the 30 meter zero, and I dropped him nice and cleanly. So I'm going to go and pick him up, put him in the back of the truck, and it's back to work on the rats. Well, I'm going to call that the last one. It's been a really productive day, it's been a very long day. Those squirrels first thing this morning, then all those rats and a bonus rabbit as well. So yeah, really varied day, but um, yeah, lots to show for it. The Rexham X Potensis has performed really, really well. Very impressed with it. Uh, and any misses have been purely down to me. And the Hick Micro has been superb as well. So all that's left to do now is go and pick up all those rats. Thanks very much for watching.
A great round-the-clock pest control session for Rich there. Next up, I'm taking a look at the BRK Brocock Ghost Bullpup. Well, as you can see, we've got a very accurate gun on the bench this week. That's a 40 meter group, shot in a fairly light right to left breeze, and it looks very tight to me. So what we've got here is the BRK Ghost. It's a very adaptable bullpup, and prices start at 1,400 pounds. Let's get inside, and I'll tell you all about it. Right then, anyone familiar with BRK's sister company, Daystate, will no doubt recognise the frame of the Delta Wolf and Alpha Wolf electronic mega guns. Now, the synergy between the two brands enables some fantastic gains through shared research and development, and the Ghost benefits from the super rigid one piece chassis found on those flagship day states, but it runs a fuss-free mechanical action. There are various size and power options available with potential to churn out muzzle energy in excess of 100 foot-pounds. Now, what I have here is the super stubby carbine version, which measures just a shade over 65 centimeters before you fit a silencer and tips the scales at about three kilos unscoped. Now the stock may look pretty minimalistic, but it actually has a lot of functionality built into it. The uh, butt pad is height adjustable, and in front of that is a cheek support with a curved edge, which makes for a really comfortable contact point. Now, if you slacken off its fastening screws, you can actually slide the cheek support back and forth along the rail upon which it sits to achieve perfect positioning. That dovetail rail actually extends the entire length of the upper section of the stock and it also holds the Picatinny scope mounting rail. Now that rail can slide back and forth in the same manner enabling you to achieve correct eye relief no matter what type of scope you're using. Now BRK has also incorporated a tiny degree of slope into that mount which should do away with the need to shim mounts when zeroing scopes at extreme range. The stock also incorporates two side rails for accessory attachment, as well as a rail on the underside for bipod mounting. Now, I really like the steep pistol grip, which, like the butt pad, can be swapped out for other styles if you wish. Though I've got to say the standard version felt great for me and really put me on the trigger very comfortably. As with many ballpups of this type, the carbon bottle serves as the forend. Now the carbine model does have a smaller bottle than the other versions and you do have to be careful about keeping your fingers away from the muzzle which only just clears it. Now I got around that by fitting a 0 dB silencer which really has hushed down this sub 12 foot pound version's muzzle report. All versions of the Ghost run humor regulators and regulator pressure, which is displayed on the gauge on the left hand side of the stock, can be adjusted by the turn of a knob which is positioned just above the neck of the bottle on high powered models. Now, legal restrictions obviously prevent such adjustment on sub 12 models, but all versions of this air gun feature a power adjustment wheel at the rear section of the gun. That clever power wheel gives you a choice of 20 different power outputs, but the Ghost has another really clever trick up its sleeve in the shape of an easily removable barrel, which enables you to quickly shift between different lengths and different calibers. Now available calibers include 177, 22, 25 and 0.30. 
Now, switching between those different barrels, along with swapping out to the relevant pellet probe, should take you no more than about five minutes. This gun is set up in 177, and the supplied magazine holds 13 pellets or slugs. Now that mag can be loaded from either side, and as with the two day states that came before this gun, it is possible to clip in two magazines at once to double capacity. Now to reload that magazine, you simply open up the face plate, turn the inner drum until it stops, and then drop a pellet into the first bay nose first to hold that drum under spring tension. Then it's just a matter of popping pellets into those remaining chambers until the mag is full. You then snap the faceplate back into position and the magazine pops into the gun just beneath the cheek support and you're ready to start shooting. The Ghost has a side lever action that works with that neat magazine to deliver fast, reliable reloading. That's conveniently positioned just above the pistol grip and it features a really nice big chunky drop down handle. It can also be swapped over to the opposite side for left handers. Now the mechanism is really positive and smooth and it ensures that fast follow up shots are always to hand. This gun has a great trigger with a match type blade that's adjustable for height, angle and length of pull. The two stage unit is also fully adjustable. Now, I don't like to tinker with triggers on review guns because I think they should be judged exactly as they leave the box. This one is really crisp and predictable and with none of the sponginess that can sometimes blight triggers on bullpup air guns. Above the trigger blade sits a discreet cross bolt type safety catch. Now it's in the safe position when it's pushed across from the left to raise the button on the right hand side of the gun and then you push it back from the right when you're ready to take the shot. Although the Ghost's carbon fibre bottle is removable, filling is by means of a supplied foster connector via the inlet which sits just in front of the trigger guard. Now, maximum fill pressure is 250 bar and the number of shots that you manage to glean from that will depend very much on the model that you're using and power output. Now, at sub 12 foot pounds with the smaller bottle, you should be able to expect about 300 shots and with the bigger bottle, as many as 500. Now, your air reserve in that bottle is displayed on the gauge on the right hand side of the stock, so it's very easy to see when it's time for a top up. At maximum output on the power wheel, this gun was producing a very healthy 11.5 foot pounds and Thanks in no small part to that Huma regulator, consistency was staying within five feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now, that great consistency combined with an excellent barrel and a very predictable trigger are the key components in enabling this gun in delivering the kind of accuracy that it displayed out on the range. So that is the BRK Ghost. It's a compact, very adaptable and very accurate bullpup. It also feels to be very solidly constructed. Now this is an air gun that I would happily use for just about any live quarry shooting application and it can also really cut it on the range. And if you factor in those high power options, you should be able to really push the distance with it. And if all that isn't enough, it even comes supplied with a hard case. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for this week, but we'll be back with much, much more in a fortnight's time. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It's absolutely free, and it means you won't miss a single episode. Also, do take a look at the subscription offers for Airgunner and Airgun World magazines that we've got listed in the show description. Enjoy your shooting, and stay safe.